domestic violence, abused women, battered women have been the experience of women. Yes. And why is this so? Gone are the days when women and children were not counted in the population censuses. But still here with us is a patriarchal world with misogynistic practices. The sexual division of labor, sexual stereotyping, and the pink for girls and blue for boys practices has cast these norms in our societies stronger than iron. Males are perceived as stronger, wiser, and more valuable than women. And women are perceived as the weaker sex. Women's role had always been seen as the caregiver, looking after the children and the family. That is, birthing and caring for children, cooking and washing. Men's role was seen as everything in the public sphere, being the breadwinner and becoming involved in all the jobs and activities in public institutions such as lawmakers, national decision makers and policy makers. This is compounded by the age-old idea that women are the property of men. So it becomes all about power and control and normalization of male privilege. But since 1975, a wind of change has been blowing, whispering, and howling for equality of the sexes. Many women have tried to change this situation. Enough is enough is their cry. But for real change to come, we need to dismantle the patriarchal ideologies and structures. We need to change our anti-women laws, policies, protocols, socialization, and attitude. This is much greater than parenting and parenting skills, which leaves the parenting responsibility on mothers and blame them for every wrong that their children does. This is a global pandemic that governments need to address. They need to start seeing male and female, girls and boys, men and women, and all genders of equal value and worth. Our government need to use our national school curriculum as an agent of change. Character development should be the main curriculum pillar. Non-sexual stereotyping textbooks is also necessary for the healthy socialization of our children and to bring about the necessary changes. This should be accompanied with the eradication of anti-women laws, policies, and protocols. It's time to be inclusive so we can be peaceful, progressive, productive, and truly democratic. This calls for structural changes across all public and private institutions. Addressing the root cause of all problems is a must. Eliminating all violence against women and girls is a must. The organizations that I am involved with are always working on issues that matters to women and girls and give full respect to their human rights. Our latest production is the creation of a book with a powerful play that speaks to the dynamics of domestic violence. The play simplifies the domestic violence laws that Belize Women Against Violence movement drafted and fought for, and the domestic violence protocols that Building People movement wrote in a simple, easy to read and understand language. I am happy to have been able to bring to life the creation of our newest production educational tool regarding domestic violence in the form of a Belizean written play about Belizean domestic violence realities. This book, Women Know Your Rights, will be distributed countrywide. We all must know the laws, use the laws, and implement the laws. Your help is needed in 
educating the public. Therefore, we encourage you to use this Belize and Play in your women's group, youth groups, school drama classes, and festival of arts drama presentations. Our organization will be airing a live dramatization of this Belize and Play on our local radio station, likewise on our Facebook page, website, and other social media platforms. We encourage you to view and share the information with your family and friends. Let us free ourselves, our homes and communities from violence. Let us work on creating a violent free Belize. Joining me in this quest are many people, including doctors, police officers, and counselors. I will share with you the thoughts of four people working to end domestic violence. Dr. Samantha Param Casey has this to say, get examined by a certified medical doctor in your area and use your legal medical report as a tool to bring an end to domestic violence. We are here to help serve and restore you, not just physically, but mentally and emotionally. Seek help before it's too late. Superintendent of Police, Francisco Ack, gives us some advice. He says, stop tolerate abuse and report it to the police. It is our responsibility to help you. Now listen to what Councillor Rene Wentz has to say. Domestic violence doesn't only affect the person who is a direct target of the violence. It affects families. As much as people believe they can hide the violence from their children, it's impossible. Children know. And the stress of worrying about their abused parents' safety is a hard burden to bear. And Dr. Jennifer Chuck Kaskaret speaks out on this vexing issue. Domestic violence can affect everyone, regardless of age, gender, race, sexual orientation, or socioeconomic status, whether physical or psychological. It can negatively impact our society as it creates a vicious cycle and affects families, especially if children are involved. As a society, let us empower victims rather than stigmatize them so that they seek help and put an end to domestic violence. A big thank you to the Embassy of Switzerland, to Mexico and Belize for funding of our Know Your Rights Domestic Violence Laws Project. Also, to my supportive production team, I say thank you. Saving lives, preventing domestic violence is everybody's business. Yes, ending violence is the responsibility of each of us. What are you going to do about it? I call on the unions, churches, schools, city, town, village councils, and every organization in Belize to get involved and break the cycle of violence. Join us. Join Building People Movement, Belize Women Against Violence Movement, and the many other people working to end violence against women and girls. Let there be peace. Equal value for equal work. Equal respect and equality between the sexes.